Hey, welcome back to the channel. Now, if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that I use Windows machines, Linux machines, and Mac OS. I have a whole separate channel on Linux and I do all the production for that channel on Linux. But for this channel, I was doing my production on Windows until recently I started migrating over to Mac OS. Now, the only desktop computer I have for Mac OS is a 2014 uh, Mac Mini. I have an M1 MacBook Air. I absolutely love that computer. That is the best laptop I've ever owned, and I'll probably do another video on that. But I wanted to upgrade that desktop computer. I didn't need another screen, so I didn't need like a, an iMac, and I didn't need a pro level machine because I do, you know, these YouTube videos and I do a, a few personal things, but that's about it. So I did not need to spend all that money on a pro level machine. So that really left the M1 Mac mini or the Intel Mac mini. Now cutting right to the chase, I went with the Intel Mac mini and specifically the 2018 i5 with 32 gigs of RAM and you know, it just has that integrated graphics. That integrated graphics is a bit of a problem, but I'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, the M1 Mac mini is a fantastic computer. I did try out one of those and I ended up returning it. Now, the reason I returned it is because of my workflow. That M1 chip is fantastic. Don't get me wrong, that is a great chip. It's super energy efficient, it's super memory efficient, and it's just a great all around uh, chip. You know, with the M1 chip, you can run iOS applications, so that's a bonus. And obviously, everything's gonna be going to Apple Silicon. But for me, I was having a bit of a problem because I do most of my editing in DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is very GPU uh, dependent and the GPU in that M1 is very good. DaVinci Resolve worked very, very well on there unless I did somewhat of a complicated timeline. Once I did a, a bit of a longer timeline or complicated, did a bunch of corrections or effects or you know layered some fusion clips on top of it, it would slow down, uh, not to a crawl, but it, there would be a, a definite noticeable lag in there and it just became a little problematic on those longer timelines. So that's the reason why I returned that. Otherwise the M1 uh, Mac mini is a fantastic computer. So I talked about how efficient that M1 chip is and that's a fantastic chip. And I also talked about the limitations of the integrated graphics card on the Intel processor. So why would I go with that Intel processor if it's even more limited graphically than the M1 chip? Well, the big reason is that with the Intel Mac mini or any of the Intel uh, Macs, you can use an external GPU. Now, if you don't know what an external GPU is, that is an external box that a graphics card goes in. And then that external GPU hooks up to the Mac mini through Thunderbolt 3 and then I just have my monitor plugged directly into the graphics card that's in that external enclosure. It works so much better. Now you do lose some bandwidth by going through Thunderbolt 3 than you would if you had it you know, just directly hooked to a computer, which isn't really an option in this case, but it's infinitely more powerful than the integrated graphics on the Intel chip or the M1 chip. All those problems I had with DaVinci Resolve on that M1 chip were gone. Uh, long timelines were no problem. M layering multiple, multiple effects on that timeline, absolutely no problem. Fusion clips, no problem. Rendering, no problem. Uh, all the issues that I had with the M1 chip in DaVinci Resolve went away. Now, if you're primarily using uh, Apple products, including Final Cut Pro, then this isn't gonna be as much of a big deal for you because the good thing about Apple owning the hardware, the operating system and the software is that they can tightly, tightly optimize that stuff and Final Cut Pro works extremely well uh, on the M1. I didn't see some of the problems that I had in DaVinci Resolve using Final Cut Pro. I just preferred DaVinci Resolve and so that's the path that I had to go. Now at some point, I really hope they add support for external GPUs with the Apple Silicon chips. Uh, right now, the way it is, you know, it's not quite powerful enough for my workflow, but if I had external GPU support with the M1 chips, it would have been a no brainer. I would have gone with the M1. Now, the rumor is that some of the future M1 chips are gonna have integrated graphics that are as powerful as some of the uh, dedicated graphics that we have right now. So. You know, maybe this won't be an issue in the future, but uh, right now I had to go with the external GPU option and that's only available on the Intel uh, Max. Now, if you have any questions or comments on anything I talked about in this video, please make sure you leave those down in the comment section. Again, I currently own that Intel Mac mini, but I 
have owned the M1 Mac Mini. So if you have any specific questions about any of the workflow that I've talked about, make sure you ask me those as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so so you can see when I put up more videos. And thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.